Hi, so in this video, I'm going to discuss the symptoms of Camp Lejeune water contamination here with veteran trial lawyer Stan Guy. He's my business partner at Dolman Law Group. Stan, you know, today we're going to discuss some of the uh, common conditions that we're seeing that veterans are showing up with and their families who spend time either at uh, MCAS New River, which is Marine Corps Air Station New River in Jacksonville, North Carolina, or at Camp Lejeune, which we more commonly see in terms of the ads that are going all day long on television. What are some of the common symptoms that you're seeing? Do you want me to just go through the list of diseases and just run them down? Let's kind of back up a little bit. You know, Camp Lejeune is something the government's known about a long time, okay? And if you look as far back as, oh, heck, I forget. It was back in like the 90s. We started seeing some legislation push forward where we're starting to grant medical benefits to people with Camp Lejeune issues. And then, oh, we're going to grant disability benefits to service members. And then sort of things advance where now we can get disability benefits for family members or service members. So the government's been acknowledging all along that there was a problem with Camp Lejeune and that there were certain diseases and cancers and manifestations from the poor quality of the water. I mean, these are toxic It wasn't chemicals. until we Toxic chemicals, tons of toxic chemicals in the mm -hmm. water, sometimes three to 4,000 times as much of these toxic chemicals as was allowed by EPA standards. Yep. Okay, And they resulted in a number of different conditions. Now that we've got this Camp Lejeune Act passed, it's finally codified, and people who have these conditions can seek compensation. And, the, and Matt, maybe you can go into a little bit. Some of these conditions are act actually so strongly related to the water and the chemicals at Camp Lejeune that they're called presumptive conditions. Yeah. Where all you have to prove is that you've got this condition and that you were on the base for 30 days during the time period. That's it. And the time period is and those uh, are January 1st, 1957 to December 31st, 1987. So long as you show that you were th spent 30 days on the base, either as a family member, contractor, or an actual veteran, that you were uh, there at the base, you qualify. And the... I'm just going to go through the symptoms and diseases real quick. And it's, uh, it's breast cancer, bladder cancer, female infertility, esophageal cancer, kidney cancer, hepatic steatosis, miscarriage, lung cancer, leukemia, multiple myeloma, scleroderma, myodysplastic syndromes, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, neurobehavioral effects, which it runs a general gamut of issues, renal toxicity, and finally Parkinson's disease, which is a very serious neurological disease. What these are related to, though, is, you know, three main chemicals that are found in the water, the drinking water and the water supply at Camp Lejeune, and that is um, TCE, PCE, and benzene. TCE is trichloroethylene, PCE is bichloroethylene, and benzene. We all know these are known carcinogens, and the government knew about this, and much of it came from improper disposal of uh, chemical solvents. Some are used for cleaning metal. Others are used for a dry cleaning facility that was based at Camp Lejeune that began in 1953. And when they've done studies in the early 80s, they showed that the water at Camp Lejeune, you know, the EPA allows five parts per billion of PCE in drinking water. That's considered allowable. That's not dangerous. The water at Camp Lejeune had 43 times that amount. And just think about that for a second. At 215 parts per billion, this is what our veterans and their family members were exposed to for years upon years. The water that they drank, bathed in, used to clean their clothes. I mean, this just was all over them. And the diseases and uh, conditions are horrific. And that's why we're seeing, you know, if you're at all, unless you're sitting in a you know, cave with your thumbs in your ears, you're seeing the commercials that are running all day long since the passage of the PACT Act, which encompassed the Camp Lejeune Justice Act. That's what sort of changed everyone's awareness now, because veterans have been knocking at the door on this stuff for years, mm -hmm. okay? People have known they've had the symptoms. Uh, people even tried to sue on this before, okay? And they've been shut down by North Carolina statute of repose, which basically gives people 10 years to file claims mm -hmm. under any circumstance. Now this lack changed everything. So if, even if you're someone who tried to make a claim before and was turned down, uh, someone who hasn't explored the claim process before because someone may have told you that you couldn't do it, everything has changed, okay? Everything has changed with the passage of this act. The government is finally trying to do the right thing by the injured veterans and providing real, meaningful compensation to people who were injured. So the symptoms that we're showing from the, uh, the toxic water or the volatile organic compounds at Camp Lejeune, 
what are we seeing? What's the long-term effects? What's, what's, what is, at the end of the day, what's the gamut of these cases run? How long do you think it's going to take and what's, what's the process? Well, here's what we're looking at. Right now, we've got about a two-year administrative window. So what you want to do is you want to contact an attorney if you've got something going on. First, that list of symptoms you read off is not exhaustive. This is a list of most of the presumptive conditions, meaning all you've got to do is show you've got the condition and lived on the base. There's a whole host of other conditions that can still qualify you to make a claim. They're just not what we call presumptive conditions, meaning they're not the type of conditions that automatically get you through the door. So no matter what you've got going on uh, that you believe may be related to Camp Lejeune, it's always good to call in, have someone talk to you about it, find out if you qualify to make the claim. But, okay, we're talking about lifelong issues with people. We're talking about significant compensation. The government has waived its immunity at this point, okay? You can bring your claim. Two years. Two years, we expect to have most of these resolved in the administrative claims process. So what you've got to do is we're, we've opened a window. We're trying to send these things in. The government's admitted it's their fault. So it's just a matter of establishing compensation for the people that were injured. That's it right now. And unlike most mass torts or multi-district litigation type of claims, this one, it's more imperative for you to get in on the front end because we've got that two-year window. So call an attorney right away. If you're, call us right away if you've got any questions, if, if you might have a Camp Lejeune case or you might have symptoms from toxic exposure to Camp Lejeune water. Yep. For more information, just and if you might already be on our website, but if you're seeing this on YouTube, it's www.dolmanlaw.com. Do you like in David? O-L-M-A-N-L-A-W.com. You can reach us any time of day at our number. And I hate to, because this number is not related to just medical issues. Also, we're personal injury lawyers. It's 833-55-CRASH. We're representing Camp Lejeune victims nationwide. And um, we already have a, a wide assortment of claims and, and issues that we're investigating regularly. So give us a call. We stand by. We're ready to offer a free consultation and case review. Oh, Matt, I can tell you, just with the people we've already spoken to, I'm amazed at just the different symptoms we're seeing, some of the relief these people are expressing, saying, I've known it all along. Uh, I, I, you know, this is an ongoing issue for these people. It's not something that just popped up. So the amount of sort of satisfaction and, and, and what you hear in clients' voices when they finally realize this is being addressed and they're going to receive real money for what's happened to them, mm -hmm. uh, it's great. You know, it, it's really a, a good feeling. I 100% I agree. Our veterans deserve better. Thank you very much. Yeah, especially with something the government knew about for so long. Over three decades. I appreciate your time, Stan. Thank you very much. Hey, it's always fun.